Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we have moved outside because we have this awesome Lenovo SR665 which is a dual AMD EPEC server so um, yeah I thought we should have a look at this uh, it should be a very well equipped server so um, yeah let's see if we can can get this out of the box and uh, see what's inside and today's video is filmed in front of a live audience. Let's see what's in the box. It's a server, who would have thought? Yeah. We have the standard thing, we have the empty box apparently. Not even a... They put a piece of paper in there. Okay. Not even a power cable on this one. I'm sure it must be here somewhere. Did they cheat me for a power cable this time? What have... But we have the rack rails. We're gonna need those when the server is gonna be mounted at some point. And we have the server here. It's a 2U server. It's, it's very normally wrapped. I have an issue with these big boxes because I could very well fit two servers in here. I think it's kind of wasteful to, uh, to wrap the servers this well instead of uh, optimizing it for less shipping volume. But let's, let's get this out of the plastic. Which means that as soon as the server is powered, there will be a power output on this USB port. The other one, the USB 2, has a little... Uh, the other one has a little wrench. That means that you can connect an external device to here and get even more information from the XCC and and configure stuff. There's not a lot in the front of this server and of course it says over here that this is the SR665 server, which is the model that will do a dual AMD EPIC processor. On the top of it there's a lot of information though, but let's start with the back of it. Let's see the connections coming out of it. Oh, there was something that I wanted to mention. I did actually want to show you this lip here, which I think is really weird why they put that on there. I don't know why that is there. And they have this pull-out thing for putting information so that you don't have to glue it on the front of the server. So if you want the server name and the IP number and who to contact if the server goes wrong, well, it's a bad idea to close off this uh, airflow. So, um, they have that instead. So let's go to the back. There. Okay. So on the back here, we have uh, we have room for a lot of PCI slots in this one. Room for eight slots here, which is awesome. That has actually been something that I have been been waiting for because I do actually at work have some solution that needs at least seven slots and eight will be great. So this one is equipped with two fiber HPA cards and two network cards, each with uh, two ports. On the system board, room for the OCP, which is the, the network card that you can plug in here uh, while the server is running. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we're not using it for anything on the server, but uh, <laughs> well, yeah. And then we have some USB ports, two USB ports here. We also have the ID button over here. So if you press the ID button on the front, somewhere around here, it, the server will light up blue and you can find it on the other side of the rack. So that is handy. And this is the XCC service port for the management. So you would connect that to your management LAN and be able to manage your servers from anywhere, preferably using the XClarity administrator and managing your server that way. So after the USB ports, we get <laughs> the good old trusty VGA connection. Awesome. We have uh, another USB 3 port and down here it says that there is an NMI. So there is a press button that you can press to reset and give it an interrupt that way. It, uh, it has two power supplies. This is pretty normal, 1100 watts, but they are pretty small. They're not very big. So a little nifty power supply. So <laughs> yeah, they come bigger, they come smaller. So um, I very much recommend if you are interested in this server and want all the specs and want to know all the things that you can get 
to and with and from and over and under with this server how much ram will it take what processors will it take so on and so forth there is the site called lenovo press and uh, if you search for the model number sr665 lenovo press you get to this page where they have collected everything in a nice one page where you can go and select all the different sections if you want to check all the network cards that are available all the rate controllers all the power supplies all the all you can see that in there what's available for exactly this server from Lenovo all the other stuff is naturally not there but if you want to put a GPU in here there is also the GPUs that Lenovo has uh, tested and approved and stuff in there and they will of course be Lenovo branded GPUs to put in here so they will work with it uh, you can run into trouble if they are not uh, Lenovo branded but I have run all sorts of stuff in Lenovo servers that wasn't Lenovo so usually it works but all the stuff on that page Lenovo has tested for you so let's go to the top of the server on the top of the server there is uh, more information so over here we have the different PCI cards you can use PCI cards or you can use NVMe lanes and you can do all kind of different configurations and they kind of tell you some about that here some of it you can do with one CPU some of it you need two CPUs and so on and so forth there's a little bit about taking in and out the CPUs there's something about the M.2 slots that you can boot on here I'm gonna be very exciting to see that I'm not sure I've seen this system or if it's in here I hope so there is uh, information about the power supply and how the LEDs work on there there's the RAID controller adapter there is an overview of the system board and what everything is on the system board there's the order of the RAM of course if you're gonna fill it up you just put in all of them but there is 32 blocks of RAM in this server which is a lot the server is available in all kind of different configurations you get an overview of some of them here probably most of them and there is different riser cards that you can get so yeah good stuff there's something about how to mount it in the rack and how to put in a backplane and what the leds in the front over here does so yeah cool let's go into it oh dear i think we have a key for that <clears throat> and... so now it goes up and we can take the lid off I do believe the metal is thinner than I've seen before. This looks very clean. And here is that boot solution uh, that I hadn't seen before. So that's kind of new to me. So there is two Lenovo discs in there. They look very much to be uh, SSDs. So uh, fast enough to boot on, but not faster than that. Okay, so we have, we have hot pluggable fans here. Awesome. You can take that whole assembly out of there, there, and underneath it there is cable for the for the back planes and signal and stuff. I do believe that the signals actually is cables that comes from the back and goes uh, out to the front. So, uh, yeah. so very nice that you can take this out this easily. Then there is this plastic buffler here. That can be pushed, moved out of the way. We can see the two CPUs that are in here. I do believe it's a couple of very beefy CPUs that are in here. Uh, I forget the number though. I don't suppose it's on the box. Nah, I'll um, I'll put it on the video and maybe in the in the pop up on the screen. But we see these are very beefy CPUs which the heat sinks also kind of says just look at this the heat sink is down here but it has all of this where it moves the heat from the cpu and up here uh, to be cooled off that is a rather big heat sink and a very weird workaround to get the heat out of there so <laughs> kind of funny <laughs> there's a lot of ram in this and all of these blocks are 64 gigabyte blocks And take one of them out uh, yeah 64 gigabytes to our pc4 and they're 3200 megahertz so very nice ram 
and the server is half full of RAM, so uh, that would be 16 times 64 gigabytes. On the system board, we have a lot of connections. Most of them are for putting NVMe disks in the front of the server, but on this particular server, there's absolutely nothing in the front. It will, uh, so it will of course boot from these and then it's gonna be working the rest of the time on, uh, well, it's gonna be on-premise storage. It has those two fiber channel HBA, so it's gonna be, uh, so it's gonna be using storage from that. And these are the riser cards. And nowadays you get nice X16 riser cards. That's really awesome. So you can just put in your graphics card and they have uh, put a lot of power connections right here. Unfortunately, they are using their own weird power connections. So uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of uh, irritating. There would be plenty of room to have a normal uh, GPU power supply connection right there. They have something new. They have a power connector here, which go down to a power connector down there. I believe that is probably to transfer a lot of amperage. So a uh, 12 volt, a lot of amps. And that power connection the rest the rest of these connections are puny so uh, yeah big power connector right there and room for three slots right there and this is also you can check out the Lenovo press page and see what and check out what other riser cards are available so yeah and with them and as always if you want to use all the PCI slots in a server, you need both CPUs, uh, as far as I know, these days. So let's have the other one out. It's exactly the same thing. And this server is actually bought so that these are alike. So instead of having the OCP, the the one at the bottom, well, we have selected network cards that are alike. So if a network card dies, well, it's the same network card. We don't have to mess around with if it's a, it's if it's an OCP or if it's a PCI card. It's always just a PCI card. So yeah, it's a, a little weird thing that we have going on there. So underneath that, we have some chips. Nice, nice thing for the motherboard riser and the same power connector here which we can also see there we have a cable here for the m.2 power it says and it gets the signal from over there and it gets the signal from over there and it goes up here it's a bit of a mess with uh, these three connections uh, that could have been prettier so we have this cable that splits out into two connections and goes into this thing yeah, so mm, not an especially big fan of that, must admit. Guess it will work. We have another beefy power connection on the system board here. We have another two over here. There's plenty of power on the system board, I must say, and plenty connections. PCIe connection here, number three. PCIe connection number two. PCIe connection number one. So, yeah. And now the sun is coming out. So this model of server, uh, the 2U, they're pretty much like a Swiss army knife in, uh, in options. You can do servers with a lot of drives in front of it, which if you fill it up with NVMe drives up here, well, then it can't do much over here. Or you can fill it up with GPUs down here, and then you can't fill it up with uh, too much stuff up here. You can do a lot of stuff. You can't do all of it at the same time, but you can model it pretty much as you need it, but you have to choose what you want to use it for. Um, the last two PCI Express ports, they go in here and they go over there. And I believe they need a connection from one of these ports here to, to do that. I don't see any connections that would bring it over here. So most likely it needs to go into one of these connections and then you get another two PCI Express ports going out this way, which brings you up to, to eight ports. So awesome so the server is of course very powerful those epic cpus well they are very decent in performance i must say uh, if you look at the list of cpus and which is the best well you have to go quite a bit down the list before intel is uh, is on that list so uh, yeah 
AMD is uh, is the way to go at the moment. So nice AMD server. I have not had a chance to turn this server on yet, so I haven't got a clue if it's any good yet. We will have to do that at some other point. I'm sure I'm gonna get one of these one day, but well, right now they're too expensive and too hard to get. I'm gonna end it right here. Uh, I don't have too many of the facts with me out here, so uh, yeah, um, I'll see if I can put some of them on the screen doing the video, but the server can do a lot of stuff. It can handle a lot of RAM, it can handle the best CPUs, lots of power it can eat up from the ridiculously high power prices at the moment i will um well i should promote something shouldn't i yeah go check out bargain hardware and see if you can't find anything that you need it's time that you gave yourself a little gift and remember if you use the checkout code my playhouse you get five percent off of your purchase at bargainhardware.co.uk so um, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye-bye.